The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. And starring three of radio's foremost actors. Brett Morrison, Joyce Gordon, and Leon Jenny. In Fire in the Sky. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we join two young people who find themselves in the strangest situation human beings ever encountered. It's the story I call Fire in the Sky. It's late evening, and a convertible with the top down is driving along a lonely road in the Shenandoah Valley. The driver is young, in his 20s. So is the girl beside him. They're Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas Ramsey of New York City, married less than 24 hours and honeymooning. Nick Ramsey is driving slowly, for both he and Sally are watching the great golden disc which is rising in the sky above the hills to the west. Uh, not the moon, but the new comet which the whole world is talking about with excited interest and uh, some apprehension. Nick, it's so bright. It's grown much brighter since last night. Yes, I know. Seems to be about half as big as the moon now. You can almost see it grow. It looks as if it were coming right at us. Well, that's just an illusion. It'll pass about 15 million miles away, the radio said. 15 million? That sounds like a lot. But I wish it were more. Oh, they said it wouldn't do much damage even if it hit us head on. The comets are mostly gas, you know. Well, it certainly looks solid. It is beautiful, though, isn't it? Hmm. I'm glad we decided to drive tonight so we could watch it. Let's turn on the news and see what the radio says about it. Mm-hmm. I'll try Washington. Danny Dunn has been giving a blow-by-blow account of its approach. So, everybody okay. everywhere, this is your feature reporter, Danny Dunn, speaking from Washington. Well, the big news tonight is still Comet X, as it's been nicknamed. Tonight, it seems it's going to pass little old Earth a bit closer than was thought. Maybe inside 10 million miles. But it's nothing to worry about. Can't hurt us any. A comet is just gas, you know. <laughs> like some congressman here in Washington. Oh, uh, speaking of Washington, the president and his cabinet quietly left town today with their families. We're told they're going to a special government observatory where they can all see Comet X through telescopes. Well, that just shows you how interested everybody is. The rest of the world is standing outdoors tonight, keeping an eye on the sky. After all, this is a spectacle mankind sees only once in a thousand years, and nobody wants to miss it. Well, folks, the government has asked me to pass along the following to you. Don't be alarmed if Comet X seems to be getting awfully close. Well, I guess there's nothing new on it all. It's just an optical illusion. Nick, look up ahead. Somebody's signaling us with a flashlight. Yeah, it looks like an old codger, one of the local natives, I guess. Well, do you think we ought to stop? Such a lonely road. Oh, he probably just wants a lift. Anyway, he's so old he couldn't hurt us any. <laughs> Hello, you want a lift? Oh, evening, folks. Mighty glad you come along. I need some help back. Help? It's my partner. Rock slide fell on him, crushed his chest in. He's down in the mine. I need help to get him out. You're a miner? That's right, ma'am. Name's Jones. Jerry Jones. We got us a mine up this road about a quarter of a mile. Poor Sam hurt himself an hour ago. Been waiting ever since for somebody to come along. Well, Sally, I guess it's up to us. We can't leave some poor fellow dying and not help. But, Nick, are you sure? I'm sure it's all right. Okay, hop in, Mr. Jones. We'll have your partner out just as quick as we can. I hear a 
there, folks. The little shack covers the mine shaft. Well, come along, Sally. Mm hmm. I'm sorry we haven't any first aid equipment here, Jones. I've got some down below. This way, Mr. Ramsey. You have to go down on the lift. Nick, look how bright it is. The comet seems to be growing bigger by the minute. Uh, here we are. Uh, step inside, folks. I got the flashlight. Huh. You've got a regular mine lift in here. Machinery and everything. What kind of mine is this? It used to be a coal mine. Got abandoned. Me and Sam, we found a little vein of diamonds down in the coal. Diamonds? Now, wait a minute. There aren't any diamond mines in this country. Sure there is. Got some down below. Prove it to you after we fix up, Sam. Uh, please step on lift, Mr. Ramsey. Nick, I think this is a trick. So do I. A diamond mine. Listen, Jones. Coal and diamonds don't go together, even though they're both carbon. So we're not getting on that lift. I'm afraid you have to, Mr. Ramsey. Believe me, I'll shoot if you try to get away. Nick, a gun. Now listen, put away that revolver. I don't know what kind of crazy scheme this is, It's but... not crazy. I'm trying to save your lives. Save our lives? You see that comet in the sky? Yes. They're calling it Comet X. They should be calling it Doomsday. You are crazy. That's enough talk. In 14 hours, this Earth and that comet are going to meet, and time is precious. Get on that lift, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey, or I'll shoot. Believe me, no harm will come to you if you do just as I say. Yeah, I guess we'd better do it, Sally. There's no use in arguing with a madman who has a gun. Oh, well, if you say so, Nick. Now, that's better. Now, hold on tightly. Don't do anything foolish. If you don't know how to operate this lift, then we have a thousand-foot drop below us. We've been going down for so long now. We're almost at the bottom, Mrs. Ramsey. Please don't be frightened. I'm doing this for your own good. Say, who are you? You're not a native. You lost your hillbilly accent long ago. No, I'm not. It was just a crude disguise. My name is Jeremiah Jones, formerly Professor Jones. Now, we've reached bottom. The surface of the earth is a thousand feet above us. Now, Mr. Ramsey, if you and your wife try to attack me, you might succeed. But you'd be very foolish. You'll need me to get you out of here again. Yes, I suppose that's right. Very well. Please walk quietly ahead of me. These old mine shafts are quite level. I'll shine my flashlight ahead and you won't have any difficulty. I suppose we have to humor you, but... Why are you doing this? What are you up to? You won't believe me if I tell you, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey... That you two are the most important people in the world tonight. So just walk ahead of me and we'll have the explanations later. How much further is it? All these tunnels are winding and twisting. Nick, I'm completely lost. Listen, Jones, if that's your name. Come to your senses. Take us back to the surface and we'll forget this happened. Careful, there's a door ahead of you. Oh, oh yes. Push it open and go in. Well, shine your flashlight inside. We can't see a thing. You'll find a light switch beside the door. Turn it on. Nick, he's closed the door. He's, he's locking us in. Jones! Jones! Turn on the light and just wait calmly. I'll be back. I have to go to the surface now to see if I can rescue anyone else. Jones! Jones! Oh, he's gone. Nick. Nick, I'm frightened. No, it'll be all right, Sally. I'm sure it will. He said there was a light switch, didn't he? Yes. Let's see if we can find it. It should be here beside the door. Maybe it's higher. Yeah, I've got it. Good Lord. Nick, we're in a room. Completely furnished. Yeah. Chairs, tables, electric lights. Oh, there's even a radio. Through those archways, I can see a kitchen. Another room. 
But this place is like a furnished apartment. A thousand feet underground, with walls of solid rock. And he's locked us in here. But why, Nick, why? I don't know, Sally, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Nick, what time is it? How long have we been down here? 2 a.m. We've been locked in here nearly four hours. Nick, it's crazy. He's a madman. He must be. I wonder. If he's mad, there's certainly a method in his madness. But... Look around you. This furniture. A radio. A kitchen. There must be a generator someplace to supply these lights. That's what I mean. Only a madman would fix up an old abandoned mine like this. You know, I've just placed his name. Professor Jeremiah Jones. Who is he? He's an obscure astronomer who ten years ago claimed to have discovered a comet no one else could see. And he dropped out of sight. He seems to have an obsession about comets. He said Comet X should be called Doomsday. Yes, yes, I know. And I can't help wondering. Let's turn on that radio again. I have a hunch we'll be getting some news soon. Real news. All right. Nick, how can a radio work way down here underground? He must have a wire running above to the surface. It's just music. Well, let's leave it on. Maybe a bulletin. Mm. Hello, everybody. This is your special reporter, Danny Dunn, back with a very important bulletin. Nick, we've got to I have just come from a meeting at the Smithsonian Institute, and I have some last-minute news about our mysterious visitor, Comet X. He's leading up to something. Now, folks, I don't want to alarm you. Panic won't help anybody. But it looks as if there may be some danger after all. And it's only common sense to be prepared for it. Oh, Nick. It seems Comet X is not holding to the course predicted for it. Its orbit now intersects the Earth's. About ten hours, the Earth will pass through the glowing heart of the comet. Just as Professor Jones told us. I repeat, it. there is no cause for undue alarm. And I have Mr. Andrew Weatherby, head of the Scientific Bureau here at the microphone, to tell you in person what to expect. Uh, Mr. Weatherby. Please. Nick, give me your hand. I'm frightened. Yes, this is big if they've got Weatherby himself on the air. Uh, good evening, everyone. As you all know, a comet is composed largely of glowing gases. Now, just what effect these gases may have when the Earth passes through them, we do not know. But we anticipate they will be so tenuous, they will hardly be noticeable. However, accompanying the comet is a core of tiny particles of rock and iron. Now, these, entering our atmosphere, will cause a spectacular display of shooting stars and may do some damage. No bet. Accordingly, the government is asking everyone to take the following precautions. Within the next eight hours... Take shelter, uh, underground if possible. Otherwise, in cellars or in air aid shelters. Uh, take with you all the food and water you can manage. Take bedding, warm clothes. And be prepared to stay under shelter for at least 48 hours. Uh, begin your preparations now. You will receive further instructions by radio. But above all, remain calm. Well, folks, this is Danny Dunn again. I'll be standing by all night long to bring you the latest. Keep tuned in and don't worry. This will be a great story to tell your grandchildren. So long for now. Nick, there's something they're not telling us. I'm sure of it. Do you suppose that the cup... Professor Jones back. Why, Professor? Oh, Nick, he has two little children with him. Oh, one of them is just a baby. A little girl. Here, give it to me. <laughs> there, there, it's all right. You mustn't cry. Everything's all right. Thank you. Now, if you, Mr. Ramsey, can take this little boy. Fortunately, he's still sleeping. Just let me have him. I've got him. Now, you sit down. You're all in, and, and there's blood on your coat. I'm afraid I, I've been shot. Oh. I'll put the boy on the couch there. Yes, he's still sleeping soundly. Now, let me look at you. Let me get this coat off. I'm sorry, but... Got to come off. There. Uh oh, you've lost a lot of blood. Yes, I, I know it. Too much, I'm afraid. We'll have to cut your shirt loose and fix a bandage. Sally, can you help me? Oh, yes. Baby's gone back to sleep. I'll put her down on the couch, too. There. Now, what shall I do, Nick? I'm going to cut away the shirt. You pull it loose as I cut. All right. How did you get shot, Professor? And where did you get those children? I, 
They went out to bring back more people to, to this shelter. There were no cars on the road. I went to a house a mile or so away. Family and some visitors were out in the lawn watching the comet. That's fine, Sally. Now give me something to wipe away the blood. Oh, here. Let's go. I knew if I tried to persuade them, they'd think I was crazy. I saw the children, a boy and a girl, asleep in the back room. I stole them. The baby woke up and cried. Somebody shot at me. I got away in the darkness. I... Catch him, Nick. I've got him. Help me ease him into this chair. All right. He's passed out from loss of blood. And here we are, stuck down in an old mine a thousand feet underground with two children that he's taken from their families. Yes, here I am. So you're awake. How are you feeling? Very weak, I'm afraid. How are the children? Oh, they're fine. Luckily, they're too young to be scared. Sally's out in the kitchen feeding them. Now, look here, Professor. It's one thing to lure us down here. It's another thing to steal two babies and Please, bring them... Mr. Ramsey, face the facts. Haven't I convinced you the entire world is in grave danger? Danger? From what? A few chunks of stone that may be part of a comet? The radio last night admitted some damage might be done. Some damage? What do the broadcasts say now? Uh, I don't know. We haven't listened. After we got you into bed last night and took care of the children, Sally and I just fell asleep. Since we woke up, we've been so busy we haven't had a chance to listen. Then turn on the radio now. Let's listen. Of course. While you were gone, Andrew Weatherby urged everyone to take shelter for a few days. So, everybody, this is Dan Dunn, sleepy, but still on the job. Well, I, I guess you won't find anything else on the radio this morning except the comet. It's so bright you can see it blazing away in the morning sky like a baby sun. It's about four hours before its path intersects ours. Four hours? I repeat again the official advice. Take shelter. Stay under cover for the next few days, but don't panic. Panic is more dangerous than the comet, believe me. I have to admit that a lot of people have unfortunately lost their heads the last few hours. Roads leading out of every city are clogged with refugees trying to get away. A good many people have been killed in the crush of crowds fleeing the cities. We have reports of hundreds of auto accidents, some looting. Fires are burning unchecked in a number of places. The firemen are fleeing with the others. Washington this morning is a deserted city. So many people here have autos, you know, and they were able to get away. All the air raid shelters are full. People in them are being very calm about it. Our news from other places is a bit scanty. Some lines are down. I'll keep bringing you all the bulletins as they come in. All right now, I've got to get a little rest, so this is Den Dunn signing off temporarily, folks. Well, are you convinced now, Mr. Ramsey? Oh, people are losing their heads because they're scared. But that still doesn't say the comet is actually dangerous to the Earth. Yes, I know. It wouldn't be if it was just an ordinary comet. But it isn't. Well, what is it, then? Mr. Ramsey, the fiery head of Comet X is radioactive. Radioactive? It will envelop the world in a searing bath of atomic fire. In a dozen hours, civilization will have come to an end. How's the professor, Nick? Unconscious. His fever is high and he's in a delirium. His pulse is very weak. If only we could do something for him. I've done what I could from the medicine chest. In his mind now, he's reliving the time ten years ago when he first discovered Comet X and predicted that it was radioactive. He predicted that? Yes. Yes, we had quite a talk while you were busy with the two kids. He was an obscure professor of astronomy in a little college. He found a speck of light wandering around in the sky, identified it as a comet analyzed it as being radioactive and predicted that on its next visit it would strike the Earth. And nobody believed him? Well, the comet had vanished by then. Hmm. Everybody thought he'd imagined it. And when he claimed it was radioactive and would destroy civilization, that was too much. He was fired, he had a breakdown, and was an institution for years. Oh, yes, now I remember. I read something about it years ago. 
But the war was on and... And people had other things to think about. Everybody forgot Professor Jones and the comet. You see, the atomic bomb hadn't been developed then, so the idea of an atomic comet was considered plain crazy. And now it's come true. Oh, Nick. Yes. Well, let's turn the radio on again, see if Danny Dunn is still broadcasting. All right. What time is it? Well, my watch says eight. Must be eight at night. No way to be sure, way down here underground. Well, everybody uh, here is. I don't guess there's much more I can see. We're broadcasting from the sub basement of the building. There's about six of us locked in here. I don't know how much longer we can hold out. We haven't had any communication from outside Washington for the last hour. All wires are dead. Can't pick up any other radio broadcasts. Washington's a dead city now. It's a weird sight. We have a television camera hooked up on the roof. Shows all of the big government buildings outlined by a ghostly greenish light. Luminous gas surrounding the head of Comet X. We're right in the middle of the comet now. Be about six hours before it starts to withdraw. Anybody who can hear me, stay underground as long as you possibly can. Don't come out. The radioactivity will be deadly for a long time yet. The estimates vary. One guess was that our Earth will be poisoned for 20 years to come. In that case, our power seems to be failing. I guess we'll have to sign off now. So long, everybody. She's gone up the air. Nick. Nick, think of the whole world dead. Now, 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 wait a minute, darling. There's bound to be millions of people in safe places like we are. Caves, tunnels, old mines. Yes, but did you hear what he said? The Earth may be poisoned by radioactivity for years. Mr. Ramsey. Yes? Mr. Ramsey. Yes, Professor? I'd... I'd like some water. Of course. I'll bring it. Here you are, Professor Jones. Thank you. How are you feeling? My head is clear, but I, I'm very weak. How, how long was I unconscious? Almost two days. Two days? And the comet... Has come and gone. And the world... The radio's dead. We can't pick up anything. The last report from Washington said it was a dead city. If only they listened to me ten years ago. Now, you mustn't upset yourself, Professor. You did everything one man could. Yes, yes. When I was released from that institution last year, I set about fixing up this refuge. I bought the old mine. All by myself, I brought down furnishings, machinery, food. When I tried to get a few people to join me here... I thought I was insane again. We understand, Professor. In the end, I had to resort to desperate trickery, which got you here. And we're very grateful for it, sir. And I stole two children, a boy and a girl. Out of the whole world, you four are all saved. But there must be other people alive somewhere. Yes, yes, of course, now. By the time the surface of the earth is livable again... Will it really be 20 years? Yes, Mrs. Ramsey. Between 15 and 20 years before the human race can once again live on the earth's surface. But in even 15 years, the people who are still alive now... Exactly. Some will live. The human race is very tough. But they may be terribly changed. To re-establish civilization, we can only be sure of you four. Oh, no. My dear, you mustn't be dismayed. I've planned carefully. There's everything you'll need for 20 years down in this cavern. Medicine, food, clothing, books, gasoline. You must not go above ground until it is absolutely safe. Then you will find the world changed. Animal life, plant life, it 
may have been altered greatly by the radioactivity, but it will be safe then. Professor, you're too weak to talk. No, no, I must... I must talk now. I haven't much more time. Of course you have. You're going to get well, Professor. We need you. I wish I could, but I won't. Now listen. Build for a better world. We seem to have gotten off the track somehow. Maybe, maybe nature simply decided to be done with us when she sent that comet. I don't know. But this is a chance to start over again and, and do better. And, 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 uh. Professor. Professor Jones. Nick. Nick, he's not... I'm afraid he is. He's dead, darling. We're left. You and me. Down here, a thousand feet underground. We have to live here. For 20 years or more. Oh, no, Nick, no. Nick, you can't give way, Sally. We've got too much to do. Listen. It's the baby. I've got to go to her. That's what I mean. We have to take good care of those kids. Yes, but... Of course, Nick. Of course we do. And we'll have to give them names. We could call them Adam and Eve, but let's not. Suppose we just call them Johnny and Susie. Yes, Nick. <laughs> All right, Susie. I'm coming. I'm coming. Mysterious traveler again. I wonder if you'd help me check up on something. Would you just step outside and have a look at the sky? There's a speck of light up there, uh, just to the right of the North Star. It wasn't there last night, and I was just wondering if you... Oh, but it couldn't be a comet. Of course not. And even if it is... I'm sure we're in no danger. Of course, if you'd like to know the location of a nice, deep cave... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. Just heard The Mysterious Traveler with Maurice Tarplin in the title role. Others in our cast were Brett Morrison, Joyce Gordon, and Leon Janney. Original music played by Fred Mendelssohn. All characters in our story were fictional. And any resemblance to actual persons in name or otherwise was purely coincidental. Phil Tonkin speaking. This program has come to you from New York. For news as it happens, from where it happens, listen to the Mutual Newsreel every weekday evening over most of these same mutual stations.